All right, what's up, guys? It's Larry here with another video, and in today's video, I'm gonna be going over the top five nat threes or natural three stars in RTA or real time arena. All right, so I don't know if I mean I make a series on this channel. It's called Road to Conqueror One in RTA, and I'm a free to play player, so you know I don't have a lot of nat five and stuff. So it helps to build some of these nat threes. That you might need an RTA really to get anywhere. Now I'm not anything special at RTA, as I'm not saying I am. Uh, also, one more thing is that I mean, obviously this is my list. It's not like the list or anything like that. So if you have different opinions, honestly, just leave them in the comments. I want to hear your opinion on the top five nat threes in RTA. So this is just my opinion. It's really pretty close between a lot of them and there's obviously a lot that I have to leave off there's only five you can put and you know there's a number of good three stars in in RTA uh, and also I'm not gonna be doing any light darks in this video because you know yeah they're not threes but that doesn't mean everyone has them whereas if you've been playing Summoner's War for a while then all the regular you know fire wind and water nat threes you should have or hopefully you'll have most of them, so you'll have most of these monsters. Light Dark is a different story, you know, there's a lot of LD Nat 3s. I wish I had that I don't have Lin, mainly Lin, but, um, you know, there's a, I mean, it's just, there's a bunch, but, so yeah, this is just the top 5 Nat 3s regular element in RTA Real Time Arena. Alright, so without any further ado, we'll go ahead and get into the video. So, coming in at 5th place, now 5th and 4th place, I'm going to say this right away, they're pretty interchangeable, four, you know, one of them could be 4, one of them could be 5, but I believe they're 4 and 5, whichever one you like more is 4, whichever one you don't is 5, now they're both really good, and they're both really similar, so I'm going to start with Bulldozer, the Fire Frankenstein now. What Bulldozer does is, first skill will attack, and these have a chance to stun the enemy. Uh, it'll attack three times if there's no harmful effects on the enemy instead of two. So you get a decent chance of stunning right there. Second skill will attack all enemies and decrease the attack bar by 30%. Not bad. Uh, damage deals proportionate to your max HP and defense. This one does proportionate to your defense. And then his third skill, the really good one, uh, it will ignore the target's defense. But it'll stun him for one turn afterwards. Uh, the damage increases according to your defense. So if you haven't told, you build him on defense. If you don't know that, all three skills you know require defense. So you build him on defense, and he hits super hard, right? So what people do with bulldozer and RTA is they basically they use a copper bulldozer team a lot of times with a defense buffer. Or an attack buffer and stuff like that. So you, like Bernard, you use a speed bar buffer and then like a defense buffer or whatever. And then you use Bulldozer and Copper to nuke the guy. So you one-shot, hopefully you can one-shot someone with Bulldozer. Hopefully you can one-shot someone with Copper. And then at that point it's a 4v2 and you should be able to win from there. But you're used to just snipe enemies. And that's what he's really good at, is just sniping enemies with this skill right here. And then you these stuns are honestly nice too. I actually haven't built a bulldozer. I, I, I have been meaning to build him for so long. I want to. Maybe I'll build him soon. But anyways, um, great monster in RTA. You know, you use him in one of those teams, like I was saying. And that brings me into the fourth monster on the list is going to be Copper. Uh, the pretty much counterpart to Bulldozer. Like I said, you're going to use him in a similar way. You snipe with him. His first skill will attack and stun. Uh, and then let's see, and it speed debuffs as well if they're under a defense break, it looks like. Uh, the second skill will attack all enemies and have a chance to defense break them. And then the third skill, again, the nuke skill, the snipe skill, will basically it'll ignore defense if your defense is two times as much as the defense of the enemy. And when it ignores defense, it hits super hard. You know, you see 40, 50, even more than that, sometimes K damage that the copper is dealing on someone so it'll one shot like most monsters you know what I'm saying especially if you have a good copper it'll one shot like anything plus your bulldozer could you know hopefully one shot someone 
So when you mix those two together, uh, it makes for a good list. It makes for a good team right there. And then it makes it hard because, you know, if they ban one, then they still have the other. If they, you know, the, it makes it hard for for the opponent to choose who to ban. So it's, and that's a good thing. When your opponent is having trouble who to ban, then you're in a good spot because if they if they can't find a good person to ban to counter you, then you're in a good spot, right? So you want you'll snipe them and then it'll give you an advantage right away. So that's why Copper is coming in at fourth. Great uh, sniper monster. Great teamed up with monsters like Olivia is really good with Copper and Bulldozer, and then Bulldozer is really good to be cop paired with Copper. Uh, you know, Megan, people use Megan. There's uh, just defense buffers, you know, in general are good with them. Alright, so that actually also kind of brings us into the third place is going to be Megan, the Water Mystic Witch. Uh, Megan's a super popular monster, you know, even in PvE, she's good. So, Megan's definitely worth a build right now. You don't have to 6 star Megan. Megan's one you can leave at 5 star and work fine for the most part. I mean, obviously, it doesn't hurt to 6 star. But you won't necessarily need her 6 star for a lot of things. A lot of people use her in the Doublution Arena teams. You got Bernard and Megan Doublution. That's the team I use. Great team because she boosts attack bar and gives attack buff. So, just good, good monster in that way. So, what it's going to do is the first skill is going to do a dot with a chance. Second skill will strip with a chance and then put a block button officials on with a chance as well. And then the third skill will increase the attack bar of all allies by 20%. Plus, it'll give all your allies an attack buff and a defense buff for two turns. So, the way people a lot of times use Megan is with Bernard or another attack bar booster, and then they'll use either um, Copper and Bulldozer because, you know, she has a defense buff, or they'll use Lucian and, you know, a Nukers and stuff like that. But basically, she's used as a monster that'll help your whole team get the first turn as well as give you guys attack buff and defense buff depending on what you're using. Uh, that's really, really helpful, especially if you use Bernard and Megan. That's 50% attack bar to all your monsters. So you don't even need to make the other ones that fast, and it'll give them all the first turn. And then, you know, your Lucians or your Copper or your Bulldozer or whatever will one-shot them before they even get a turn. So that's why Megan's really good uh, in RTA. You see a lot of people using those Lucian teams and stuff like that. Very common monster in RTA, right? So that's third place. Now getting into second place is Bernard. Where are you at, Bernard? Bernard, the Wind Griffin. Uh, Bernard is actually a pretty good RTA monster. His first skill will just do damage according to your speed, but hopefully you're gonna have less speed in your Bernard anyway. So it can actually hit kind of hard. Now, like my fastest slot four room is a crit damage room. So when he crits, he hits pretty hard, especially if there's a defense break, so that's nice to have right there. Second skill does a defense break and attack buff, which is also actually really handy to get a defense break like that. So if you need it, it's actually really handy. And then the third skill will increase the attack bar of all your allies by 30% and will give them a speed buff for two turns. So Bernard is used, you put your fastest runes on Bernard, and then he goes first, you boost your team's attack bar, and then your Megan goes next, boost your team's attack bar even more. So by that time, you have enough attack bar easily for your whole turn to your whole team to go next. Hopefully, if your monsters are speed tuned and stuff like that. And once that's the case, then if you have it right, if you guys all get to go, then they're gonna have a really hard time. There's a bunch of ways you can use it. You can either use stunners or whatever to stun them for a whole turn or whatever. You can use nukers like Lucian that will do really good or you can use like Galleon and then some AoE nukers or you can use Copper and Bulldozer there's a ton of different options you can use right there but just getting yourself the first turn is uh, is super good so that's why Bernard is so meta in this game in Arena and in RTA a ton of people use that strategy I mean you know once you get to G3 and Guardian and you know High and Conquer and stuff it does fade off but when you're in low like where I am Bernard is great. Like a lot of people use Bernard, right? Now, all right. So that's why Bernard's coming in at second place. Now, the first place, who is really head and shoulders above everyone else, I'd say, uh, just a really, really good monster, is going to be you, Rakuni, the Fire Hog. Now, everyone should build a Rakuni. He's good in so much PvP. Like he's great in Guild Wars. Good, so good in RTA. Good in Siege. Just really good PvP monster, right? 
His first skill attacks and the the ally with the lowest attack bar, their attack bar will go up by 15%. Alright, now the second skill will fill an ally's attack bar all the way to the full. And what it gives him a sp what a speed yeah, a speed buff for two turns. Oh, uh, that's a really good skill too, right? It's like Kona's research, except you get speed buff instead of a uh, attack buff. Alright? Now the passive. Removes up to two harmful effects on an ally with the lowest HP and it heals them by 10% each time he gets a turn. So, what that means is every time he goes, it cleanses and it will heal. Alright, so that's really, really good to have. It's like Vero, you know, except instead of cleaning one buff off everyone, it'll clean two off the lowest enemy and it'll heal them. But it, he basically just gives your guys so many turns because you have this to give yourself turns, which what I do a lot is I'll Rabbit's Agility Raccoonie because then he gets two procs of the heal like if someone's really low it'll heal four debuffs technically off them and it will heal them by 20 percent so if you need heal then that and you can do that you can also push someone's attack bar that you want to go next or whatever uh you can and then this gives them attack bar too so it gives you so much attack bar between the three and it gives you heal and cleanse just crazy support monster really really good support monster so Raccoon is a monster that can really be used in a lot of different comps, whereas the other four were used in really specific comps that, you know, kind of, like you have to use one of those speed comps, or you have to use a comp of Bulldozer comp or whatever, and that's what's so good about Raccoon is, that's why I think he's head and shoulders above everyone else for the three stars, is because he, you can use him in any kind of comp, you know, you can use him in a, like, if you have some good nat fives, you can use him in a comp with them, you can use him in so many comps, like really, a really diverse monster, so... That's why Raccoon is coming in first place as the best natural 3 star in RTA. Alright, so that's the list guys. So again, if you want to disagree with my list or tell me your opinion, leave in the comments. I'm interested to hear what, you know, maybe I forgot about someone. That's really good, I don't know. So anyways, that's pretty much going to wrap up this video guys. If you have anything else to say, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, leave them in the comments. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next video.